Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we're going to talk about the abstract algebra series. So this time, we will be talking about subgroups. Before I'll start with for today's video, I would just like to thank you everyone first for all your support. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. If you have requests um, for a specific topic that you would like me to uh, discuss, you can comment down on any of my videos. I will be able to um, check on that. So, um, I would assume that you have watched already on my video for the introduction to group theory because I've discussed the basic notions in groups. So, this time we will be talking about subgroups. So, what is really subgroups? So, before I'm going to discuss with the definition, let me just uh, provide you first with a sort of illustration. So, suppose this is actually a region here um, and you have a subregion inside. So basically, um, this is a community. So whatever would be the rule of entire community, that will also be applied to the small community inside in it. So let's say we'll, we will be talking in a big city. Um, inside a big city is a barangay. So whatever would be the rule applied to the big city, that will also be applied to the barangay inside a city. So that's actually the concept of subgroup. So when you say you have an entire group here and you have a subgroup inside, so whatever would be the property uh, with respect to the operation and that, that will also be applied to the subgroup. So what is subgroup in general? So given that you have a, a group G, uh, an H, a non-empty subset that is closed under the product in G. So, if H is itself a group under the product in G, then H is said to be a subgroup of G. And we denote the symbol to denote that H is a subgroup of G. So, by this definition, we clearly have the following remarks. Number one, since we all know for a fact that a set is a subset of itself, now for a given G, G is a subset of G, so G is itself a group, then G is a subgroup of itself. And also, the identity element is also a subgroup of G. In fact, this is a trivial subgroup. Number two, if suppose, for example, that um, H is a subgroup of G, and um, H is not actually equal to G and is not even equal to the identity, then we call this H here to be a proper subgroup. That's it. Let's consider for example here. Let's say we have um, Z6. So what does it contain? It has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so what it contains are actually equivalence classes of numbers. So that's Z6. So it's actually generated by 6. Now, um, if you notice, um, the set 0, 3 and the set um, 0, 2, 4. So they're actually subgroups of Z6 under addition modulo 6. Okay, so if you are wondering why, note that um, what's the requirement again for um, a subgroup? It has to be a group, of course, and of course, it has to be a subset of that group. Now, uh, Z6 is a group here. We don't have a question for that. Anyway, I already have discussed what a group is in my previous video, so you can check the thumbnail down there. And then um, this is a subset, of course, because all elements here are found in this. So they're both subsets. The only thing that we need to do is, are they both groups? Now, um, let me double check this first here, and then you can do the second. If you have question, you can comment down there so that I would know. So I will focus on the, this one here. Um, this zero is considered already as an identity element. And um, for three, so that's an non-zero um, non-identity element, three. So in fact, um, three, 
the inverse of 3 is actually 3 because if you add 3 and 3 here, you get 6. 6 is actually congruent to 0. So therefore, it's equal to identity. This is associativity because it inherits the property of Z6. So this is a group. So therefore, um, this uh, thing here is actually a subgroup of Z6. That's it. So let's consider um, another example. Um, let's say you have a mapping um, F from G to H. And um, this mapping is a homomorphism. Then... Um, the kernel of F is a subgroup of G. So, um, we'll double check if this um, is already a subgroup. Well, we all, are, we all know for a fact that um, uh, kernel of F is already a subset of G. Now, uh, we need to make sure first that the kernel of F here is non-empty. And now, um, observe that F is homo, meaning it, F is homomorphism. So, when it is homo, it implies for a fact that um, f of e sub g, so that means the identity element coming from this is mapped to e sub h. So meaning to say, since this is mapped to the identity on h, this implies that um, e sub g is an element of the kernel of f. So this means that kernel of f has an element, so it's not empty. So we've shown the criteria that this set subset here is not empty. So we will uh, double check the other. So is this close under the product? So let's double check. Um, if you have elements A and B in kernel of F, so what does it imply? Meaning to say that um, F of A, because it's an element of the kernel, so it's mapped to an identity element in H. And um, also this is equal to F of B because um, B is an element of the kernel, so that means it's mapped. So, F of A, B, um, because F is a homomorphism, I can split them. I can have F of A, F of B. But F of A is E sub H. F of B also is A sub H. Now, that is the same as E sub H here. So, therefore, A, B is mapped to E, H, which simply tells that A, B is an element of the kernel of F. So therefore, it is close under the product. Um, also, um, if you have the identity element from G that is element of the kernel of F, then for all A in the kernel of F, um, that's A, E, G, that's the same as E, G, A, and that's equal to A. So that means to say that every element on the kernel, when you, there is a correspond, I mean, that when that will be... Um, multiplied with the identity on its kernel, the result is that element. So that will happen here. So therefore, the identity element of the kernel exists. So let's double check the existence of inverse I element. So if you have A, um, which is an element of the kernel of F, so meaning this will be, um, this A here is mapped to the identity in H. Since we know for a fact that F is a homomorphism, so um, if you have this, so this one here, this will be equal to that, okay? But um, this F of A is actually equal to the identity element, so that's E H inverse. And that's the same as E sub H. So meaning to say that this A inverse is mapped to this, implying that your A inverse is an element of the kernel of F. So the inverse of A exists in this case. So lastly, uh, for the last criteria, we are going to check if um, the kernel of F is associative. But um, knowing for a fact that the kernel of F is a subset of G and G is associative because it's a group, it actually inherits the fact that kernel of F is, holds also the associativity of the operation. So therefore, these um, has uh, satisfied for being a group, which simply tells us that the kernel of F is a subgroup of G. In evaluating if a subset of a given group is a subgroup also, um, that we need to evaluate if that subset is actually a group. So therefore, we need to satisfy all the criteria of being a group. However, um, I will show you a theorem, and this theorem is actually powerful. We call this theorem a subgroup test or subgroup criterion. 
because uh, this will actually determine if such given subset is a subgroup of a given group without expli explicitly checking all the requirements for being a group. Okay, so this theorem says that um, let H be a non-empty subset of G and the G here is a group. Okay, then H is a subgroup of G if and only if A, B inverse is in H for every A, B in H. So, instead of explicitly checking all the requirements for being a group, you only need to double check one that H is not an empty subset. So, it should be a non-empty subset of G. And then, um, after that, you only need to check the existence of AB inverse in H for every AB in H. That's it. But before we are, we're going to use this subgroup test to determine an, an example, we need to make sure first that this is actually true. So we will prove this. So let's check uh, the forward direction here. So if a um, H is a subgroup of G, then what does it imply? For every A, B in uh, H, of course, because this is a subgroup, B inverse is also in H. That is simply because H is a group. Now, because this is an element in H, this A, B inverse is an element of H, noting for a fact that H is closed under the product. So, we're done with the forward direction. Now, let's try to double check the backward direction. So that means we have to explicitly check all the requirements for being a group. Okay, first things first, um, H here is non-empty as by assumption. Okay, so that uh, being non-empty is already satisfied. Now, um, another, because um, H is non-empty, there exists A in H, which Im further imply that um, if you multiply A by A inverse, you get the identity element. And in fact, they're all element in H. Also, the identity element in H will imply that they are for every B in H, um, B inverse is actually EB inverse. And this is actually element in H. Okay. So, if you have... Um, two elements in H. So I'm actually uh, proving this by draft only. So if you want to have a formal proof for this, you can uh, let me know. So um, you have A, B in H, then B inverse is in H. Okay. This implies that if you multiply A and B, that's the same as A, B inverse, inverse in H knowing for a fact that um, a b inverse is in h so therefore um that also holds so the closure property also holds so also since h is a subset of um g so it's already associative so therefore we have proven the claim draftly so now that we have proven this claim here so this claim is true we will now uh, apply an example for that so example, if you have a mapping here from G to H and um, your A is a subgroup of G, then um, F of A is actually a subgroup of H. So we will have to show first that um, because we're showing that F of A is a subgroup of H, we, we have to show first that F of A is a non-empty subset of a H. But we all know for a fact that f of a is already subset of h. So we need to show that f of a is not empty. So how do we show that? Um, so note that a is a subset subgroup of g. So since a is a subgroup of g, this simply tells us that a is not empty. So since this is not empty, then there is an element that is mapped to um, elements in h. And that correspondingly def, um, tells that f of a is not empty because um, 
you would actually get someone from A that is mapped to here. X and Y be elements in F of A. So what does it mean? There exists A, B in A such that um, F of A is actually X and um, F of B is actually Y. Since A is a subgroup of G, so this simply tells us that AB inverse is in A. So note that if F of A multiplied by F of B inverse, since F is a homomorphism, I would have F of A times F of B inverse. Okay. And also, this is a homomorphism, so I would have F of A, B inverse. So meaning, this is an element of A. So that means this is the corresponding map to F of A. So therefore, so note that this is an element of A. So therefore, this is the corresponding map to the F of A. So which means to say that this is an element of F of A. Which means to say that F of A is a subgroup of H. That's it. So before I end this video discussion, I would have to leave you first with a corollary. Um, this corollary would actually open a lot of topics um, for the succeeding abstract algebra series. So this corollary says that if G is a group, and assuming that you would have this set here, H sub I, I in I, and this is a, a non-empty family, family of subgroups in G. Then, the entire intersection of H, I, I in I is a subgroup of G. Now, G is a group and you have um, the subgroup H sub I. So, for all I in I. Of course, E is an element of HI. Since HI is a subgroup of G, so therefore the identity element exists. So, which means to say that this is for all I, so meaning E is an element of the intersection of HI, I in I, because this is for all I, which simply tells us that the intersection of HI, I in I is not empty. If that is not empty, this is already a subset of G, then we will have to pick two elements and then the product with the other inverse should be element as well. Okay, so A, B in the intersection. So what does it mean? Then for all I in I, so this simply tells us that A is um, an element of HI and B is also an element of HI. This is for all I in I. So, HI is actually a subgroup, meaning to say that um, A and B inverse is actually element of HI for all I in I. Okay, so this is for all I in I, so meaning to say that this is actually in the intersection because this is present in all subscripts. So meaning to say that the intersection is a subgroup of G and we have shown the claim. That's it. So um, if you notice um, the proofs here, the claims here and the examples um, are actually proven only by draft. Um, I am um, only talking to you some of the details and explanations on why we get this um, specific um, concept. So if you have questions or clarification, kindly let me know so that I can comment as well. So this is all for now. So thank you so much guys for watching. So again, thank you all so much for your support and you can comment down there if you would like to request a topic. So thank you and have a great day.